Hey, good morning, everybody. Welcome to Chapel. Happy Monday morning to you. Uh, I'm Pastor Chris. It's good to see you this morning. I'm glad you're here. Uh, teachers, I need a favor this morning. I need you to help me. Um, we're going to do something a little different today, and uh, I need you as a teacher to kind of help me interact with the students. Uh, I promise it won't be a lot of work. <laughs> um, I know that uh, um, you know you probably might be able to use this time for other things, but I'm going to need your help this morning. So what I'm going to ask you to do is there will be certain times during this video that I'm going to ask you to pause. I'm going to ask you to use the pause button on the remote and pause the video. And I want you to uh, listen to the answers that your students are going to be giving you. Okay. Um, I don't think it's going to be hard. I hope I'm going to make this as easy as possible, but uh, we'll go ahead and get started. You'll kind of see what I'm doing as we go. All right. But just make sure you have that remote with a pause button handy and ready to go. All right. And not the mute button, please. <laughs> just the pause button. Okay. All right, boys and girls, it's good to see you this morning. If you have your Bibles, hopefully you do take them out for me. And we're going to turn to the New Testament, which is the second uh, half of the Bible, okay, the New Testament, which begins with the book of Matthew, and we're going to be in the book of John chapter 5. John chapter 5 today. All right. I'm going to give you a few minutes to turn there, and while you're turning, I want to tell you a story about a, a man who uh, needed the Lord's help, and uh, you know, we as Christians, we're supposed to help those who are in need. People who are, are, are in need of help, uh, we should be uh, experts at giving them the help that they need. And I want to show you what I'm talking about in our lesson today. But before we begin reading, I want to do two things. I want to just kind of uh, pray, and then I want to explain what is going on here. And uh, I'll also kind of in a minute explain why I am where I am and where I'm at, okay? I'm giving you a behind-the-scenes tour of some of our locations here at Church, the Open Door. But let's go ahead and go to the Lord in prayer, and then we'll begin with our lesson this morning in, in, in uh, John chapter 5. Let's pray. Lord, I thank you for your love towards us. Thank you that you have given us so many examples of how you have helped those in need in the Bible. I pray that the boys and girls who are watching this morning uh, will be encouraged, they'll be challenged to be uh, lights unto this world and use their good works to uh, reach others with the gospel of Jesus Christ. And Lord, I pray that people would see Jesus in us, that they would see our good works and just glorify you. And, and Lord, I, I thank you for your goodness to us. I thank you that um, you demonstrated good works to us uh, and, and all your love that you shed on us every single day, the way you meet our needs, the way you provide for us. Lord, we, we are so thankful. And I just pray that each boy and girl here today will learn to become uh, dependent upon you and not on their flesh. And Lord, that they would just love you and follow after you with all of their hearts. And I thank you for that. We love you and praise you for all that you do for us every day. In Jesus' name we ask these things. Amen. Amen. All right, let me tell you this story. So Jesus is, it's in his earthly ministry, okay, and he is walking the earth. Now we're going to talk about Jesus coming to this earth from heaven uh, and born as a baby uh, around Christmas time in, in December, okay, we'll talk a little bit about that. But this is after he's grown up. He's, he's in his 30s and he's in a man now and he's begun what we call his earthly ministry. In other words, he is now in flesh, in human form. He's 100% man, he's 100% God, and he is ministering to the people of this earth back 2,000 years ago, okay? It was a long time ago, but it's, it was a very important time in our history, and it really happened. Jesus came to this earth, and he ministered. And while he's there, if we look at verse number 1, while he's there in John chapter 5, he sees someone who's in need, and he wants to help them, which is what we're all supposed to do, right? Look at verse number 1. It says this, After this, there was a feast of the Jews, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. So we know where he is. He's in Jerusalem. He's in a city. He's in town. And he's walking along. And in verse 2, he says, Now there is at Jerusalem, by the sheep market, a pool, which is called in the Hebrew tongue Bethesda, having five porches. In these lay a great multitude of impotent folk, of blind, halt, withered, waiting for the movement of the water. So what I've done, and I, I don't know if you can see behind me, but we've got the whole, this is the church auditorium here behind me. And I don't know if you know where I'm at, but I'm actually in the area where we baptize people. It's called the baptistry. 
and I, I brought you up here for a reason. And teachers, real quick, uh, I'm going to ask you to pause here in, in a minute or so. Uh, so just kind of get ready. But I brought you up here for a reason, and, and that is because, so Jesus is near a place of water. Now, he's not at a baptistry. He's not baptizing people. I don't want you to misunderstand. But I was trying to think, where in the church building can I bring you to a pool of water? And I thought the baptistry would be a neat thing, and plus it gives you a little behind the scenes of what's going on, okay? So I'm here in the main auditorium next to the baptistry pool to help you visualize what it must have been like. Here we have, in Jerusalem, a great multitude. There's a lot of people who have some physical infirmities. In other words, they are disabled in some way, and they need help. The Bible describes them as being um, blind, uh, they're halt, they're withered, and, and it says that they're waiting for the moving of the water. So here's a bunch of people who are in need, and they're struggling, and some of them can't walk, some of them, their bodies are just really withered, they're probably very hungry because they can't work, um, some of them are blind, they can't see. Uh, so let me ask you a question, all right? And here's where the teachers are going to help me. Uh, they're going to listen to your answers, um, and they're going to let you get a chance. They're going to give you a chance to kind of uh, give you, some, give me and your teachers some really good ideas here, and you can give each other some ideas as well. But my question is this, all right, teachers? Here's where you're going to pause after I get done asking the question, okay? And listen to everybody's answers if you can, if you have time. My question is this, what, what are some things that we can do as Christians, as believers, to help a group of individuals like this, a group of people who are, are, are sitting here and they're hurt, they're, they're, they're weak, they're blind, they don't have uh, jobs, they don't have food, they can't walk, what would be some ways that you and I could help these people? All right, teachers, feel free to pause, uh, give it about a minute or two, let people answer some questions, and then we'll move on. Very good. I thought that it would be a nice opportunity for us to, you know, give some of those responses and maybe talk about some good ways that we can help those who are in need. Thank you for giving those answers. And teachers, thank you for helping me. I'm going to probably do this maybe two other times, all right? So we're going to continue on in the Bible. Look what it says in verse number four. It says, this is the reason why these people are around this body of water. It says, for an angel went down at a certain season, in other words, at a certain time, into the pool of water and troubled the water. Whosoever then first after the troubling of the water stepped in was made whole of whatsoever disease they had. That's amazing. Uh, this is a miracle from God. There's an angel who comes down at a regular occasion and the first person, he stirs the water up, and the first person to get into the pool of water after that water has been stirred up is immediately healed from all of their injuries, their illnesses, or their physical deformities, right? That's amazing. Look what it says here in verse number 5, however. There's an interesting character we're about to be introduced to. Verse number 5, it says, And a certain man was there which had an infirmity thirty and eight years. 38 years. That's a long time. Some of you guys were only 8 years old. And that seems like a long time. Can you imagine adding 30 years to that? That's a long, long time. This man has been sick. He's been ill for a, a great many years. Teachers, here's question number 2 that I want the boys and girls to answer. Alright? What would you do for this man? What would you do for this man? All right, teachers, go ahead and pause. Okay, great. I love those answers. Now, let's continue on. Let's see what happens. So, Jesus comes along. And this is great, boys and girls. I want you to see how much our, 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 our Lord loves us and cares for people, okay? And we should be like him. Verse number six, when Jesus saw him lie, in other words, he was... He obviously couldn't stand up or he was just so tired. Most likely he couldn't walk. The Bible, and I'll show you why I say that. So here he's, he's laying down. He's on the steps leading down into this pool of water. And it says this, uh, you know, uh, uh, let's see. When Jesus saw him lie and knew that he had been now a long time in that case. In other words, knowing that he had been there for a long, long time waiting for someone to help him and heal him. Jesus looks at him and asks him a question. He says, will you be made whole? Wilt thou be made whole? 
Verse 7, the impotent man answered him, Sir, I have no man when the water is troubled to put me into the pool. But while I am coming, another steps down before me. So here he is saying, listen, you know, Jesus, I, I would love to be healed. But every time I go to, to get into that pool of water after the water has been stirred, there's no one there to carry me. Uh, I don't have anybody to help me down into that water. And even if I do find somebody, if I beg and I cry out for help and I say, please, someone help me, uh, by the time that happens, by the time someone picks me up and begins to take me down to the water, someone else has already gotten into the pool and I can't benefit from the healing properties of the water anymore. All right, teachers, here's another question. Let's pause uh, after I ask the question, of course. Boys and girls, let me ask you, what would you do to help this man? Here's Jesus and he's looking at this man who's clearly in need, what would you do? And a follow-up question, what should Jesus have done? What should Jesus do in this situation? So first question is, what would you do for this man? How can you help him? And second question, what should Jesus do for this man? All right, teachers, if you don't mind pausing for just a minute and taking the answers to that question. Okay, so... Here is a better picture of the actual baptistry. This is the water that you get down into. Some of you have been baptized here. Congratulations. That's awesome. Uh, some of you still need to be baptized, and, and that's okay. Uh, you know, when we can, let's, let's do that. Um, if you've been saved and you know you're saved, yeah, let's get baptized. There's nothing to be afraid of. Um, this is what it looks like. This is where you get into it. It's just like a little pool, if you think about it. But let's, let's, you, you did a great job answering those questions, and I want to look at verse number 8. I want to show you what Jesus did. Now, some of you guys had some suggestions for what Jesus should do, uh, and let's look what he actually does. Verse number 8, it says here, Jesus saith unto him, Rise, take up thy bed, and walk. Now, real quick, before you think that he's, you know, grabbing his twin bed like you guys sleep in at night every night, that's not the case, okay? He's got a little mat that he's been laying on, and that's why they use, they use the word bed. It's, it's something that he was laying down on. It's not a, a twin bed with a mattress and a box spring and all that, okay? It's just a little mat. So Jesus looks at him, and he does what? He heals the man. This is what he's saying. He, he doesn't say, I heal you in the name of the Lord. He didn't say that. He just said, rise, take up your bed, and do the thing that you weren't able to do before. Go ahead and walk. And boys and girls, immediately, verse 9, the Bible says, The man was made whole. He was healed. And he took up his bed, and he walked. That's a miracle. And on the same day was the Sabbath. It was a holy day. It was the Lord's day. And I'll get to that in just a minute. But I want you to see what Jesus did. Jesus saw an opportunity to heal this man, and he took that opportunity. He healed him. He did what was right. Okay, so we see this awesome miracle that Jesus performs. He heals this man, and he does the right thing. But look with me in the Bible. Look what, look what happens next. Verse number 10. Okay, so there's a, a, a bunch of people who are in the town who don't like what Jesus is doing. And in verse 10, it says, The Jews therefore said unto him that was cured, It's the Sabbath day. It's not lawful for you to carry your bed on the Sabbath day. So the Sabbath day, real quick, was a holy day. And the Jews believed that it was God's day. And they believed that you shouldn't work on God's day. And they got really kind of a little nuts with these rules. And one of the rules was that, you know, if you carried your bed, that was considered work. Uh, I don't know about you, but that's not really work to me. But they thought it was. And they thought that this man who had been healed was breaking the rules by carrying this bed of his. And verse 11, well, look what happens. He said, he answered them. Uh, after, uh, you know, he was made whole, he says to them, he that made me whole, he told me to take up thy bed and to walk. And so the man who was healed is looking at Jesus as an authority figure. He's saying, this man gave me the permission. He said it was okay for me to take up my bed and walk. So here they follow up with another question, all right? They're not happy with what he said. They didn't want to recognize the authority of Jesus. And verse 12, it says, Then asked they him, What man is that which said unto thee, Take up your bed and walk? So who told you to do this? 
and boy, boys and girls, I want you to know they probably already knew the answer to that question. Jesus, this wasn't the first time he had been healing people. And honestly, um, you know, word was getting around and Jesus' popularity was growing amongst the crowd in Jerusalem. And the man responds in verse 13, it says, And he that was healed, uh, he didn't know who it was which is kind of funny, but he had been by that pool most of his life and he had been injured. He didn't get around. He probably didn't have a lot of friends, which is really, really sad if you think about it. But he didn't know who it was for Jesus had conveyed himself away a multitude being in that place. See, Jesus didn't want to sit there and glory in what he had done. He didn't want a bunch of people saying, great job, Jesus. He just left. He walked away. There were so many people there. And in verse 14, watch this. Afterward, Jesus findeth him in the temple. So the man, after he gets healed, he rightly goes to church. He's rightly going to the temple to thank God for this wonderful thing that had happened. And while he's there, he runs into Jesus. Surprise, surprise, right? Jesus is in the temple teaching. And Jesus gives him a commandment here, okay? He says, behold, you are made whole. And then he says, sin no more, lest the worst thing come unto thee. So Jesus says to him, look, I, I, I made you whole, and now I don't want you to sin anymore. I want you to, to, to uh, stay away from, from wickedness, from things that break God's law, and from evil things, okay? And the man departed, verse 15, and told the Jews that it was Jesus which had made him whole. So they asked him a question, and he went back to tell them the question, or, or answer the question, right? And therefore, did the Jews persecute? In other words, they wanted to to put him in jail, they wanted to do harm to Jesus and sought to, and the Bible says, to slay him or to kill him because he had done these things on that Sabbath day. Okay. Picture this. Jesus does this amazing good thing and he does it on God's day, on the Lord's day. There's a group of people who get really angry about that. They think that this man taking up his bed and walking on the Lord's day is a bad thing. And they think that Jesus healing this sick man on the Lord's day is a bad thing. Teachers, uh, I'm going to need your help again. We're going to pause in just a second. Boys and girls, let me ask you a question. Who is right? Was Jesus right to heal on the Lord's day? Or were these group of Jews, these individuals, who were angry, were they right and and being mad at Jesus for healing on the Sabbath day? Was was their anger justified? Were, was it okay for them to be angry with a man for carrying his bed? What do you think? Teachers, feel free to pause. I, I know a lot of you had some really great answers there. But look what Jesus says. Look how he responds. Verse number 17. But Jesus answered them. He says, my father worketh hitherto, and I work. In other words, uh, my dad is working today. I know it's a Sabbath day, but it's his day, and I'm doing his work. And if my dad's working today, if God's working today, I'm his son, and I should be working too. I should be doing good things as well. And boys and girls, this is an important lesson that Jesus is trying to teach. He's trying to teach us that, listen, when we do the Lord's work, um, we really don't get a day off. We all should be working all the time to please God. And when we see someone who is in need, we see someone who's hurting, we see somebody who uh, maybe is hungry or thirsty, or someone who is struggling, maybe somebody who is physically disabled, they don't have uh, the same physical capabilities that we do, we should help them. And put yourself in their shoes for a minute. Put yourself, I mean, think about that. Think about not being able to see. Think about what it must be like to be blind. Those people who don't have the ability to see, they have a great life. And you know what? God still loves them. And boys and girls, if they need a little bit of help, we should help them. Think about somebody who can't walk. They don't have the use of their legs for whatever reason. Think about that. They can't run. They can't skip. They can't hop. They can't jump. They can't do those things that you enjoy doing and you sometimes take for granted. And boys and girls, if they need help getting down a flight of stairs or if uh, you know they need help getting around and, and they ask us for help, we should help them. We shouldn't make fun of them. We shouldn't condemn them or treat them poorly. We should help them just like Jesus did. That's love. 
And that's what God wants us to do. Well, Pastor Chris, I'm not Jesus. I'm not the Son of God. But you know what? When you accept Christ as your Savior, He adopts you into His family and you become His child. And He wants you to act like His child, just like Jesus is doing here. So we shouldn't turn a blind eye and ignore people who are in trouble, who need help. We should help them. Look at verse number 18. This is what they said. And this makes me sad. And I'm sure it's going to make you a little bit sad too. He says, therefore, the Jews sought the more to kill Jesus. Because he not only had broken the Sabbath, but said also that God was his father, making himself equal with God. Boys and girls, we know that Jesus is the Messiah. We know that he's the son of God. We have the Bible and the Bible tells us. And boys and girls, they didn't have the Bible back then to tell them these things, but there were plenty of men of God. There were prophets who told them that Jesus was the son of God. And they ignored that truth. They didn't want to listen to it. Instead, they wanted to do what they wanted to do. And boys and girls, because of that, they wanted to hurt the one who was there to save them and help them. Verse 19, Then answered Jesus and said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, The Son can do nothing of himself but what he seeth the Father do. For what things soever he doeth, these also doeth the Son likewise. Jesus is saying, I just want to do what what pleases the Lord. I want to be like God. I want to be like my Heavenly Father. And boys and girls, we should be doing things that please the Lord. We should want to be like God. And verse 20 says, For the Father loveth the Son, and showeth him all things that himself doeth. And he will show him greater works than these, that ye may marvel. For, the father, for as the Father raises, raises up the dead, and quickeneth them, makes them alive, then even so the Son quickeneth whom he will. For the Father judges no man, but hath committed all judgment unto the Son. That all men should honor the Son, even as they honor the Father. He that honoreth not the Son, honoreth not the Father which hath not sent him. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that heareth my word, and believeth on him that sent me, hath everlasting life, and shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death unto life. Boys and girls, Jesus came to help people. He came to help the needy. He came to help the hurting. He came to help those who were physically hurt and those who were spiritually hurting. And boys and girls, we should be that way too. We should help those who are in need. We should help those who are physically in need, but we should also help those who are spiritually in need. In these last few verses, Jesus is giving us a picture of what he was going to do. He had a mission. He had a job. And he said, my job is to save people from their sins. And you boys know and girls know what that means. It means that he was sent to this earth to die on the cross to pay the price for our sin penalty. He was sent to raise from the dead to show us that he had victory over sin and death. And boys and girls, that wonderful truth was given to us so that we could have eternal life with God in heaven. And boys and girls, I talked about that in the first few weeks of chapel. And hopefully you put your faith and trust in Jesus. And if you did, you are now in his family. And we have a responsibility to help other people in need. And one of the things, you guys gave me lots of ideas of how we could help this man who is physically hurt keep doing those wonderful things. But I want to give you one other thing to think about today, and that is that we have a responsibility to help those who are spiritually hurting, those who are not saved. Maybe your mom and dad, maybe your neighbor, maybe someone else in school with you. Maybe there's someone who doesn't know Jesus Christ as their Savior. And we have a responsibility to invite them to come to church, to invite them to know the Lord, in other words, to hear the gospel truth, And we have a responsibility to pray for those people and to help them by sharing the truth of the gospel as often as we can. Boys and girls, that's a wonderful way to help someone else. To tell them the truth. To save them from an eternal torment in hell and give them eternal life in heaven. Just something to think about. I hope that encourages you this morning. I hope you see what Jesus did. I hope you see that, you know, even though these people said it's wrong to do these good things on the Lord's day, Jesus said, no, no, it's not. God is all about helping other people. And it's not wrong to help other people on his day. It's right. It's the right thing to do. And boys and girls, every day is a good day to help someone who is lost and needs to hear about the gospel of Jesus Christ. Would you make a commitment today 
to be a light for him and to tell as many people as you can about Jesus, to talk to them and tell them about how good he is, how amazing he is, how loving he is, how kind he is, and about how he died on the cross for their sins and rose again. Would you want to do that for your family maybe, for some friends that you have? And maybe you're thinking to yourself, well, Pastor Chris, I'm scared. I, I don't know how to say all those things. I'm shy. I, I'm a quiet person. Well, maybe, maybe you can invite someone to church then. Maybe you can come to church and bring them with you. Um, that's a great way because there's people in church who will help teach your friend about Jesus. And I hope you do that. It's worth doing. And when you see someone who's in need today and tomorrow and next week and next month, help them. Why? Because that's what God wants us to do. Let me read one last piece of scripture for you, proving that what I'm saying is true about how God wants us to help other people. Teachers, if you want to pause here, you can and help them find this scripture. It's 1 John chapter 3. 1 John chapter number 3. If you'd like to pause and turn there, I'm okay with that. Otherwise, just let me go ahead and read it. Verse 16 in 1 John chapter number 3 says this, Hereby perceive we, perceive we the love of God, because he laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. But whoso hath this world's good, and seeth his, seeth his brother have need, and shutteth up his bowels of compassion from him, how dwelleth the love of God in him? My little children, let us not love in word, neither in tongue, but in deed and in truth. What does that mean? Okay, It means this. Hereby we know the love of God. And that is that when he laid down his life for us, when he sacrificed for us, we can sacrifice for other people. It's not always easy to help other people. Sometimes it means we have to give something that we have. You know, maybe if, if you see somebody who's hungry, it means that you might have to make a sandwich for them. And that's sacrificing. It's sacrificing your time. It's sacrificing some of your food. It's sacrificing some of your energy to help someone else. And he says that's the way we're supposed to be. And he says, if you have this world's good, in other words, if God has blessed you with two sandwiches and you see someone who's hungry who doesn't have any sandwiches, it's your responsibility to share one of those sandwiches with that person who is in need. He says, my little children, we need to love more than just with our mouth. We need to more than just be like, oh, I want to help somebody. We need to go out and actually do it. I hope that helps you this morning. I hope it blesses you. Let's pray and ask the Lord to help us do just this today, all right? Lord, I thank you for your love for us. I thank you for your goodness. I thank you that you were the example of love. And Lord, you did it not just in your earthly life, but you do it every day. You provide the needs that we have. We have been given this great opportunity where we just need to pray and ask you for the things that we need, and you have promised to give us those things. Lord, thank you for being a kind, loving, compassionate God. And Lord, I pray that we would be like you. I pray that we would be your children, that we would be kind, that we would be loving, we would be compassionate. We would help those who are in need. And Lord, we can't, we can't make fun of somebody in need and help them. We have to either make fun of them or we have to help them. And Lord, I pray that we would walk away from sin. You know, Jesus told that man in the bed to, to sin no more. Lord, I pray that we would sin no more. I pray that we would do righteousness, we would do good works, and Lord, I thank you for your opportunity. You've given us this opportunity to do good things for others. There are plenty of people in our community who need help. And I pray that we would help them as best we can. And Lord, I thank you for all that you do for us. We love you and praise you for all that you do every day. In Jesus' name we ask these things. Amen. All right, boys and girls, thank you so much for listening this morning. I, I love you and I'm thankful for you. And I look forward to seeing you next week. Take care.